picking our way through a battle-scarred street. We're at the front line in a war-torn Damascus suburb. President Assad's National Defence Forces don't want to show their faces, fearing reprisals for taking part in the operation we're about to see, a defection by rebels who they claim want to switch sides. Out of the shadows they emerge, weapons handed over without a shot being fired, stripped to the waist to show they're not wearing suicide vests. Their phones are handed over, a valuable source of intelligence on the hundreds of fighters who've been besieged here for more than a year. These images are great propaganda for the regime that wants to show it's eroding the stalemate in some parts of the capital. This isn't the first defection in this area since June. The forces here say 20 rebels have surrendered and crossed the front lines. Evidence, they say, that they are weakening the morale of the rebels and slowly turning the tide. They claim to be part of the Free Syrian Army, saying food shortages and infighting wore them down. He says we were wrong, we're fed up, there was fighting between the groups inside, they were stealing things from each other, the leaders take all the food from the civilians. He says they've already lost this war. They came with almost nothing, just the contents of their pockets, but the forces here know plenty about them already. They have hundreds of photos of them obtained from rebel mobile phones, showing them posing with their weapons, and with this man, an alleged Saudi extremist, Abu Orde. Their flags bear Islamist slogans, and some are unbearably young. Malmum al-Khatib gave up the fight a few days ago. He used to brandish a rocket launcher against Assad's forces, but now he's disillusioned with the revolution he says has been hijacked by Islamists. Islamists have turned the country upside down. Is this the freedom they're asking for? The rebel strongholds are a jungle where ordinary people are sacrificed, women are raped and shops are looted. The Islamists talk about religion, but this is not a religion. We were living in peace before, he says. That peace is a distant memory here. These defections perhaps a sign of how fragmented the rebels have become, but it will take more than this to end Syria's stalemate, and few think this week's talks in Geneva will have any bearing on the military situation here on the front line.